three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all staying safe. Hope you're all well. And uh, yeah, the UK is back in a second lockdown. So I'm going to be sharing with you five home photography ideas. Now, during the last lockdown when I was making these videos, I had a much larger space to work with, but now I'm limited to this. My bedroom, the kitchen, the garden, if you can even call it one, this alleyway, and this shed. So even though we don't have the most amount of space available to us, I feel like we're still going to be able to create some epic photography. We've got the props, I've got the ideas, we just need to start exploring them. But before we do that, if you've got any photography that you'd like to share with me, then make sure you use the hashtag CPPhotos. And at the end of today's video, I will be looking at a couple of your photographs using the hashtag. Well, that all said and done, let's finally begin with photography idea number one. Right, you lot, jumping straight into photography idea number one. I have got this UV light and this neon UV paint. My idea is to stick half of the paint with different colors on one side of my face, then using this as a single light source just to light up this side of my face and take some photographs. All right, I think I'm ready to start applying the face paint. I'm going to mess this up big time, I'm telling you. I have no idea how to apply face paint. I've never been good at anything like this. The only kind of art thing I'm ever good at is photography and filming. I don't know what to do. <laughs> just, just start painting, just do anything. Oh my God, that's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> Oh, the things I do for YouTube. If you, if you guys do this really seriously, you'll be able to get better results. I am not doing this seriously. Oh, people are gonna judge me for this and I'm gonna be embracing that sh I'm a looking. Right, you know what? Let's just do some photography. You get the idea. Doing that photography first was a big mistake because uh, it just took up so much time cleaning it all up and setting it all up. I had it all in my beard, all in my hair, I had to jump in the shower. But we're all ready to go and for our second area of photography, there shouldn't be as much mess. Uh, and we're going to need the following items. You're going to want a prime lens. I'm going to be using the Sigma 51.4, but if you have a 35, a 50, 1.8, this should be more than enough. Some fairy lights. You're going to want some tin foil, And finally, some cardboard. So the idea with this photography is to create some shapes out of the fast nature of your lens using the Boek. And um, you can use any shape you want. You can create a love heart, you can do a star, you can do your initials, which would be pretty awesome. And um, you might have seen this done before, but interestingly, I have never tried it. And the main reason for that is, well, as you uh, already know, and as I've already established, I'm terrible at arts and crafts. I can't even do a star without it looking wonky. So we've got all the shapes cut out. We've got music notes, we've got stars, we've got a Christmas tree, and we've even got a love heart. And I've got this little setup going here. So I've had the idea actually, which got me to cut out this shape one, of using my headphones and having fairy lights set up here and putting this in front of the camera to then give music like notes behind the headphones themselves. Right, 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 continuing the theme of Boet photography, I was thinking that not a lot of people might have black cardboard and I also wanted to have a contingency plan in case the uh, black cardboard photography with the Boek in front of the lens didn't work. And this is it. So a lot of us will probably have tin foil laying around the house and what you want to do is you want to set up a scene like this. So I've crumpled it up and this will shine a lot better and create Boek effect once you shine a light onto it. I'm using this um, Andy Cine R1 light. It's a great thing about this light is it goes any color temperature and any 
colour and that really helps me get a lot of variety of shots. And there's a lot of products you can use. I've decided just to use my watch. And then I've got these uh, black perspex to add some reflective nature to it. You don't have to use this, it just adds that extra element and I really like the effects I'll get with this. And um, I think that's it. I think we'll just start shooting and see what results we can get. These shots are absolute bangers. Oh, they look so good. I've also started using this like prism to get some different kind of effects. There is a lot of creativity you could just throw at this and it just works. I feel like this is a lot better than the last Boek photography I did. I don't think those results are even comparable to these. Photography idea number three is probably the most accessible and easiest one to do out of any of these today and that is because we're looking at food photography. So food photography can be really simple or it can be a little bit more complex. This is a little bit more of a complex setup. I've got one light here as a fill, this light from above as a, the main key light and then I'm also going to be using a flash in my camera to add a little bit of bounce against this background and shine it onto the food itself. You don't have to use such a complex setup for lighting, you can stick all this right next to a window and you will get perfect amount of natural light hitting your subjects to do this type of photography. The chips are going to be ready in literally about a minute's time. But, um, we have got this new setup right here. Oh, there's the chips. Back in a minute. Right, so I've got the chips and uh, what I was mentioning before I had to go and get it was uh, basically I brought the table forward and further away from my background and I'm using this main light right here just to light the food itself but the background is completely dark giving me this low key kind of effect and I'm absolutely loving the exposure I've got right now. So for idea number four, this is a substitute idea of a substitute idea. Uh, one of my first ideas was I got a speaker but it wasn't loud enough and I was going to put paint on it and then get some really cool shots of the paint splurting up because of the base of the, um, the speaker. My second idea was to have a light bulb and have a sparkler behind it. But my sparklers didn't arrive. So I got a light bulb and some water. And with all that randomness thrown together, you get a setup like this. But the last thing we need to add is the light itself, as we're going to be taking photos of this whilst doing a long exposure photography. Whilst the camera is doing its exposure, I'm removing the light backwards and forwards so it's captured within the perspex and it's filling in the background and hopefully will give us a pretty cool shot. <laughs> So we're ready to start shooting now. I've got the focus on the light bulb, shooting at 70 millimeters, 13 seconds, F22, ISO 50. And I'm also on a five second timer so I can get to light and get prepared and start doing what I need to do. The good thing about this as well is you don't need to move the light that many times in the background. Just a few times and you will get the effect we're looking for. Moment of truth, is this a complete waste of time and a crap idea or is it actually still worth exploring? Wow, that is all types of crazy that I love. That photograph is awesome. That is a pretty cool effect. Yeah, I'm digging that. That's awesome.
So, for our very final idea, we have got something very ambitious and I have no idea if it's even going to work. We have got powder paint and I'm going to be using the alleyway to uh, get some photographs. I've never tried this before. Um, I've saved this till last because I bet a lot of people have been looking forward to seeing how you can do this at home. All you need is a large space, your front garden, your back garden, anywhere like that, you should be able to do something like this at home. So uh, let's get it prepared and let's start shooting. The next issue I'm actually going to have is getting the focus bang on right. Um, and I'm thinking I'm going to have to do obviously a self timer, but then if I can also do a uh, pre-focus. So I'm thinking like, say for example, this little container here, put in that where I'm going to be sitting and then put it next to the wall where I need to position myself so I have a rough estimate of where I need to be for shooting. Ah, there's a lot to think about here. I mean, this is a fine composition, it'll work just fine. I just need to get it right. Okay, so the camera is all prepared, we're on manual focus. I just need to get the powder paint and we're ready to start shooting. Whew. I've got a few attempts at this, I should be all right. Three, two, one. That looks f***ing awesome. So I've actually finished using all the powder paint and um, this is the remains. Look how much mess there is. And also look at it all on me. It looks amazing. Look at my jeans, right? Look at my shoes. It's literally gone everywhere. It's even all over and caked over both of my Sony cameras. So I'm gonna need to clean them up. But once I do that, we'll look through some of the final photographs, look at the results we got, and then I'll go through the hashtag CP photos. All right, so before we end today's video, let's start looking through some of the photographs. The first photography was the UV paint, and to get this photograph, um, I decided just to, at the end, to mix all the paint in together. And then when we get to editing, what I did was I cropped it so only half the face was in. I kind of like the effect this gave. And then I changed some other settings. There wasn't any presets added here. I just changed it to highlights, to shadows. I took away some more of the blacks, added a little bit more vibrancy. I played around with the calibration a little bit with some of the colors, and then just added a few little tone curves here and there to get this final result right here. Next was the Boet photography. Now the first photographs didn't come out that well. The only one that came out was the Christmas tree effect. There's a lot of a trial and error with these ones. You really need to experiment with the sizing of the shapes and everything like that to get the right results. Um, I was just a little bit pushed for time. But then we did explore the idea with the tinfoil and this worked a lot better. To edit this one in particular, I threw one of my presets on there and if you want to check these out, link is in the description below. And once I applied the preset, there wasn't much I needed to change. I just played around with some of the I changed around some of the black levels a little bit. I turned the highlights all the way down, up the shadows a bit, and I got this very final photograph right here. Next was the food photography, and there is so much to explore with this. You can even do like a close-up of a fork to get some really cool macro shots. Just a lot of creativity you can throw at this as well. I didn't really need to add a preset to this photograph because a lot of the color and everything I was looking for was already dialed into this image. It was just bringing that to the surface a little bit more. So I changed a little bit with contrast, dropped the shadows to a minus 100 to remove the background completely, giving me this black textured background. Then I added a little bit of color, changed around some of the calibration a little bit, added a bit of sharpening, changed some of the certain colours and then added a little bit of a tone curve and I finished with this final photograph right here that looks fit for a website or even a menu. Next was the light bulb idea and considering this was a substitute idea for a substitute idea, the photographs came out really well. Technically you have seven ideas to explore there if you have a loud speaker and a sparkler. Uh, but I weren't able to explore them obviously. Once I applied a preset to this image in particular, there wasn't much I needed to change. I changed around the highlights, the white levels a little bit. I added a little bit of dehaze, added a little bit of clarity, changed around some of the colors, and then from there, I did final sharpening, and then we were left with this final photograph right here. That is all kinds of randomness that I love. So our next photographs were the powder paint, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't think these were the best photographs ever, but considering I was shooting this on my own, I think they're okay. I am gonna be doing a full dedicated video probably to powder paint in the future, and I'm gonna buy like 
three separate bags so we have plenty to shoot and explore. But to edit this one in particular, I applied one of my presets and changed around some of the shadows, the highlight levels a little bit. I dropped the tone curves down quite a bit, added a lot of vibrancy and contrast to certain areas to really bring out punchiness to the main two colours of pink and yellow. And then again, I changed around some of the calibrations, added a bit more detail, changed the tone curves once more, and then we were left with this final photograph right here, which... I think it's still a really cool idea and something really cool you can explore at home if you've got the space to do so. And considering this is my first attempt doing powder paint, I, won't, I shouldn't be too disappointed, even though it's not the best. But you know what? We're going to explore it in the future. And before we end today's video, I'm going to have a quick look through the hashtag CP Photos. And the first photograph that caught my eye today was by 7th Verse. I really just like the mood of this photograph. Really cool. Really like the grainy effect you've got on the images as well. Really cool composition. Next, we've got Karen Photography 27. Love the composition of his shot. Love the sharpness on the flower itself. He took this apparently in your garden. Again, just shows if you have a garden, you've got some macro shots available right there. Love the colours. Great photograph. And our final photograph today is taken by Snapster. And wow, how much I want to escape to that beautiful landscape right now and just embrace that view. I can't even fathom it. It is just incredible and uh, yeah, amazing shot once again. Like to say a massive thank you to everyone who is using the hashtag CP photos. And that is where I'm going to be leaving today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I feel like the best thing to do during all this lockdown thing is just to be as creative as possible. And if you need some extra ideas, I have done two previous videos, which will be in the icon right here, where I've looked at other home photography ideas if you want to check them out as well. And if you did like today's video, make sure you hit the like button maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already and turn the bell icon so you're notified for whenever I release a new video but I'm going to get back to doing some study now because I've literally taken the last four days off to do this video because university work was getting a bit tedious so I wanted to do something new so until next time everyone take care and I'll see you guys in the next one peace oh.